Well, I think I will um, I will just start by uh, by showing the the three questions again. Um, Here they are, uh, and the the link for the ideas board. But I think you have to you you can't you can't get the link from this presentation. I think you have to to get it from the email that that Daniel sent out earlier. Uh, it's also in the chat window in the Zoom. Uh, oh, so. okay, very good, yeah. very good. So so there's a there's a few ways which you can you can get to the ideas board, um, and maybe um, let me just see if I can. I, I see if I can share that ideas board screen. Um, let's have a look. Some reason I don't seem to be able to. Okay, now let's see if I can. Here we go. Here we go. I can see it now. Can can everybody see the screen now? Um, this is the idea boards uh, website, and these are the three the three questions that we've asked you to uh, to give us your comments. And I can see um, we have a question from or a, or a comment there about from from Niels. Um, and um, I'm I'm happy if we we just have a have a discussion about some of these these questions. I mean, the first one: What is the biggest challenge uh, that's seen by by you in order to integrate more distributed wind into the into the power system? Um, And then the second one is uh, which support or, or what sort of tools or knowledge uh, do you think from from IEA Task Forty One or us from DT Wind Energy would would help you in your in your business for 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 integrating more distributed wind uh, into into the system and and th this could be um, obviously both at um, at the distribution level but it could also be an isolated uh, isolated grids or mini grids or um, or hybrid systems. And then the third question is: Is which specific grid services do you think that distributed wind could, could provide, and in, and in which markets? Um, Anchor, your your um your sound is very low. Anchor, were you saying something? I'm, I'm afraid it's very difficult to hear what you said. Uh, can you hear me now? Hello. Only, only very, very remotely, very quiet. Okay. But uh, it, it, it was uh, related to the common point. 
before I saw that it was one week uh, he came to the common, but I didn't see it in the participation list. Can you hear me now? Kaushik, can you can you hear Anka? No, no, it's not getting better, Anka. Okay, I can hear you, Kaushik. Um, yes. But I, I, I still see people joining. Like yeah. The number of participants still increases. So I would request whoever is there in the in the session, please ponder over the questions a bit. Uh, and, and I can see that 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 Louis, you have said that the biggest challenges are regulatory and economical. Okay. Uh, then, can you tell us what is SWT, uh, Luis? I guess it's small wind turbines. Ah, it? small but, wind turbines. Yeah, okay, yeah. Luis, you're you're welcome to 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 turn on your mic microphone, and if you want to to expand a bit on your comments. In the meantime, Leonard has also committed about fast wind power fluctuations uh, with small wind. Uh, yeah, in off grid off grid systems, yeah, with small wind, yeah, that it, that is that is a, a concern because um, because the, the the off grid systems generally don't have a large uh, capacity to absorb the fluctuations easily. That's, Yeah, and I would say the challenge is, um, yeah, if you have it in off-grid systems and then you have um, um, dispatchable units like diesel or gen gensets running, for example, then you, you have these high wind power fluctuations where the diesel genset might not be able to, to cope with it just because it's too fast. I mean, that's if you look down to the kilowatt scale, like low kilowatt scale class, of course, that levels a bit out if, you, if you're on the megawatt scale. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and of course, I, I mean, um, if you're if you're trying to to run a system with with uh, without a, for example, for a diesel generator, but but you 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 let the battery take up the fluctuate fluctuations, then the batteries themselves have have problems with with uh, premature aging. So yeah. Um, but also, also batteries also have ramping limitations, uh, especially the flow batteries. They cannot ramp that fast, anyways. So okay. the, that would not also help. Uh, and um, I, I just wanted to get clarification from Leonard. Is it only fluctuation or you are also thinking about turbulences there? Because uh, one thing I is- I was uh, thinking about the fluctuations. I'm not sure about the turbulences. Mm -hmm. You mean the turbulences that affect the rotor itself? Or? No, no, I mean the gust coming and uh, is happening once or twice oh, okay. uh, an hour or th th three times an hour or something like that. But uh, uh, the fluctuation is more like there is a predictability in the fluctuation, no? even in the wind, mm -hmm. that uh, the wind is higher in night and lower in uh, afternoon or in the noon or something like that. Depends on, the, of course, the location. But there is a, some predictability in the fluctuation, whereas the turbulence are much more uh, stochastic, I would say. And uh, but yeah. uh, but I get your get your point. The and maybe we can later discuss uh, in the second question that how how the research can help, and because this is something the uh, probably the quantification of those fluctuations or having faster ramping capabilities in some other devices, uh, some flexibilities in other other things can help other assets, but we can discuss that later. And so Louis, would you, would you like to just uh, expand a bit on um, 
you've made two uh, two very good comments there. The first one, the challenges are, are regulatory and economical, maybe rather than, than than technical. But then you you make a comment that that uh, general purpose inverters are are difficult for for small wind turbines. What, what's your experience there? Uh, yes, can can you hear me? Yes, that's okay. great. So, uh, as yesterday during the presentation of the Swaton project, we we mentioned our our experience on the connection of small wind turbines to to the grid, and one one of the difficulties we found was uh, that sometimes what is available in the market are uh, solar photovoltaics inverter. Mm. And then they are not uh, specifically designed for small wind turbines, so they are not. Uh, they cannot be directly used. You, you need to to make some arrangement to to, to use them. And um, nowadays there are not many general purpose inverters for small wind turbines. There, there are some manufacturers that uh, manufacture their own inverter but they are for their own use, they are proprietary. And the, and the other point is that, uh, in my opinion, uh, the regulatory and economical uh, aspects are the biggest challenges, even, even more than the technical ones. Yes. I I, um, I I would say that that in in the in the Kenya project that I just br very briefly mentioned earlier, um, the the challenge were definitely uh, regulatory uh, and and economical from the point of view of trying to trying to um, uh, make a, a a mini grid in in a, in a remote location to be uh, uh, economically feasible uh, and 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 needing needing support for the for the price of a, uh, or for the cost of electricity but how this runs up against the the, the regulatory system um, and and, um, and of course how the um, what prices the the main grid charges and and what sort of a policy does uh, does the government have for um, for for electricity to be to be different prices depending on the particular regions I, I agree that is a very big challenge uh, but uh, Louis and Tom, uh, what is, I can understand the economical, but I'm not sure I understand the regulatory, what kind of regulation? Is it not in my backyard kind of things or or some other other kind of challenges, uh, uh, this regulatory uh, challenges you were talking about? Well, um, for, from my experience, for example, um, in in Kenya, the the regulatory challenges are are more to do with um, even though the the idea has been to try and encourage uh, private developers and, and private investors to to um, um, to fulfil the, the the mini grid. Um, market that is there um, the the regulatory system is is such that it makes it very difficult for them to get licenses to 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 produce um, and it, and it's that kind of thing and and um, that that it, that, it, that they are in there are invested interests uh, in 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 every market like this um, and it's very difficult for uh, small players like small wind turbine manufacturers like uh, small developers to, to try and influence the policies and, and the regulations so that it makes it, it a more level playing field for them. I don't know about your experience, Louis. What, 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 what's, what's the back of, background of yours? Mm, yes, yes. In general, in general, the regulation for small wind turbines, I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on the small wind turbines, but uh, in general, it's not as developed as, the, for example, the solar photovoltaics. And when you try to to uh, develop an, an installation on a small wind turbine, even more if it's in an urban environment, uh, one of the limitations you find is that uh, usually there is no uh, regulation at the municipal level. And uh, in order to, to get the permissions, uh, the 
the procedure to, to, to get those permissions is, is very tough and very long because even the, 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 the public administrators don't, don't know what uh, uh, regulation to apply to small wind turbines. So that's also a, a, a point which is a, a challenge for this technology. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Emmanuel, you you have um, you have highlighted the difficulty in predicting the production of energy. Um, I'm assuming this uh, this somehow relates to challenges in um, in knowing what the wind resource is, um, and and are you are you looking at both the um, the annual, uh, but but also at, at the daily profile? Could you could you comment on that? Just trying to see you're not actually in the in the group as far as I can see. So I can't ask you to <laughs> to to comment on that verbally. Um, so let's move to to Javier. Um, subsidies for domestic and rural electricity users so you are you you're highlighting that there's a there's a difference there that, that should be leveled out or, or what's what's behind your point there maybe you could say a few words okay well as you know the wind resource is focused on a specific site so if you have subsidized for kind of uh, user electricity, user of electricity, it's going to be uh, more complicated to to deploy this kind of, of technology. I mean, uh, there are places when you can install small wind turbines, but um, if uh, you, um, there are not many users, sometimes in those places. So, so you mean that that um, somewhere, sometimes in 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 places where it's suitable to install the small wind turbines, then there's not the 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 need or the use for the electricity there. Uh, yes, but also uh, there are users uh, who are paying a really a small amount of money per, per kilowatt hour, and they are uh, getting a, a subsidy. I mean, they are not paying what the electricity is really, uh, what the electricity really costs. No, no, you mean there's, there's a cross subsidization going on? Sorry? There's, there's a cross subsidi subsidization. So they're they're not they're not paying the real cost of the of the of the electricity production. That's true. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From I, I see a comment from Leonard as well. In the meantime, the uh, lack of controllability of low-cost wind turbines, which are type one or type two. Uh, Leonard, do you think there are many type one being manufactured nowadays? I I understand that. Uh, excuse my ignorance. That most of the even the smaller wind turbines have inverters there. I'm not sure if I have a comprehensive overview of this, but I still like when I look into the wind turbine catalogs for small scale applications, I still see a lot of wind turbines that are of uh, type one, two. And then especially if you would think about low cost, maybe um, people would like to avoid converters, but then they don't think about how such a um, off-grid system, for example, can be controlled if you need to curtail wind and, and so on. 
So I'm I'm not sure about about this. What's the percentage of type? The, but the at least in Denmark, are, yeah. uh, there are still uh, the stricter grid codes are dictating now. Uh, even for the smaller wind turbines, uh, well, not maybe 1.8 kilowatt or something, but a bit bigger than that. Yes. And so they they would require probably uh, converters, no? But maybe the older ones still. Yes, I mean, for mature markets like Denmark, it's pretty clear. Also here, the, yeah, I mean, people can afford a higher cost of uh, buying a small wind turbine, but I'm thinking more about like rural areas where you really need to focus on low cost applications and where there are actually no grid codes. So you basically define by yourself <laughs> how, how you integrate these uh, turbines. As far as I, I, I could not really identify grid codes for um, like specific grid codes for off-grid systems, like rural off-grid systems. Is there any comment from the manufacturers here uh, that uh, are there uh, this new manufacturing, are there many fixed speed wind turbine being manufactured? Uh, I'm not entirely sure here. Um, that's also a reason why I participate in this conference to hear more from the stakeholders. Yes, uh, I was wondering if someone else has a comment in the in the forum here. Yes, if I'm allowed to come with a comment. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> yes, I present two things. Uh, I work at the Folio Center for renewable energy, but I have another cap, well, as I showed you in the conference yesterday. I uh, work for the manufacturer cheap wind turbine, and uh, I made the controlling system, the end test, and uh, we have built about 450 uh, machine, around six and 10 kilowatt, and now we work a little bigger. But uh, we have uh, run the last half year, we have uh, run an Iceland system with battery system. And uh, I have tried with inverters uh, for the wind turbine, and I have tried a synchron generator. And now I'm back with the asynchron generator after a lot of tests. And uh, we run now on a battery system because when we talk about short circuit on the grid, then you always need a grid performance inverter. Something can handle a short circuit out there, even if you have a, a size around a, 60 kVA or, or less, you, you always need to have uh, enough power to make if the short circuit happens on the mini grid. And if you already need a uh, grid performance in waters and this size, what we're running with now, and a 72 kilowatt hour battery, lithium battery pack, then uh, the, the, the grid is so strong, so we put the uh, wind turbine directly connected. And a wind turbine, like we say, is a lot of fluctuating energy. And the battery we use today, the type is uh, so good, so it's no problem, I would say, uh, at all to handle the fluctuating energy. And the grid performance in water, uh, we see it's very stable. And it has run for a half year without any problem. The only problem is you run full of energy sometimes. Okay. Thank you, Anker very valuable uh, information. Um, over to you, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I am. Um, Lucas, I saw you, you just turned your microphone on. Was there something that you'd like to say? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> I just uh, came into the room. <laughs> yes. But that's fine. Um, please um, make make any comment that you you'd like. Uh, I I first have to read uh, what, what is uh, on on the list. Sure, please do that. Please do that. Um, and then maybe maybe the others of you who have been been in the room and have been listening to the the conversations here, um, maybe you could consider looking at, 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 at what the sort of challenges that, that we've been talking about and what sort of what sort of tool or knowledge might might help with with this 
Um, I can see the comment by Emmanuel, um, who I think made the comment and then left, um, but where he says that it, the, the difficulty in predicting the production of energy, especially for, for smaller uh, hub heights. Um, and I think that's a, that's, that's a matter of, of knowing the wind resource better. Um, and it's always a problem with, with smaller wind turbines um, that a, a measurement campaign that you might be able to do for, for a large wind farm, it, it just wouldn't be uh, economically viable for a smaller turbine or for, for an individual um, turbine. Um, and, um, and there, for example, um, I know, as I said earlier, that, that we at DTU Wind Energy are, are working on a global wind atlas that um, should give you more detail on that. Um, can anybody else, uh, does anybody else have an idea of what sort of uh, knowledge or tool that might help them overcome um, any of the challenges that they, they feel? In, in relation with this uh, difficulty of predicting the production, mm. uh, apart from the difficulty of predicting the wind resource, uh, I would add the difficulty of predicting the influence of the obstacles because usually the global, the global wind atlas are for high towers and where the influence of surrounding obstacles is, is not so important. But if the, the tower is not so high, the obstacles, even the trees or the vegetation, uh, plays an, an important role and usually diminishes the expected production. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, obstacles definitely will uh, will reduce the the production, and and the the lower the tower height, the the, the more influence that they they have. I mean the um, um, the WASP program used for for predicting wind energy production from large, from larger wind farms. Um, that that is something that that can be used, but again, once you get down to lower hub heights, uh, further uncertainties come in. So, but that's maybe a point that we could we could take on board. Yeah. Yes, I mean the the DTU also developed a, well something like a, a wasp for small wind turbines, which is called My Wind Turbine software which is uh, also available, but it's, it's not for free. It's, it has a, a, a cost, well, yeah. not a very high cost, but it is it has a cost for the valuation of the influence of obstacles and yep. the energy production estimation of the wind turbine. You're absolutely right, yeah. Yep. Maybe this also relates to siting. I'm not sure if there are some tools for optimal siting of small scale wind turbines. I mean, for large scale, this uh, exists quite widely, but maybe then in order to reduce the influence of obstacles, there could be some tools that focus on optimal siting. Yes, this one, my wind turbine is in fact uh, helpful also for that because it allows the simulation of uh, different sightings of the, of the wind turbine so that you can decide which is the, the optimum one. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not a comment, but I would like to ask with Tom that why year by year a smaller small wind turbine number has is decreasing uh, compared to larger wind turbine? 
uh, one day before, one of the speaker told in the US that a smaller wind turbine is just 2% compared to a larger wind turbine. Can you uh, explain this from your experience? Well, my, my, my first comment would be that it, it's, um, it's a, a, the downward pressure on, uh, on cost or cost per kilowatt hour has really driven up um, the scale and the size of wind turbines. And the small wind turbines are, are left uh, being really challenged to be able to produce a kilowatt hour of electricity at a com competitive price unless they can feed into uh, some kind of specialized market uh, a bit like what we were talking earlier um, um, where, where there might be a, a, a subsidized market I mean uh, Kaushik you might be able to come in here again or, or uh, if you're if you're online um, I mean, one of the things that distributed wind can, can also do is, is to provide ancillary services and, and the more modern wind turbines can do this more easily than the, than the old ones. Yeah, yeah the uh, bigger wind turbines are much more controllable for the system operators as well because they are co-located at a single point and are connected to the grid at a single point. If you if you need to control all the smaller ones, even if they are controllable with the inverters, you need to have the control uh, control and communication infrastructure in place, which is quite expensive. If you need to put fiber to all the small distributed wind turbines, also the capabilities. If you don't have a plant controller, is not the same. Uh, but then the other uh, of uh, the all uh, uh, all. Of course, the uh, driving factor is the is the cost. It's not uh, reduced. The cost is not being reduced. But the also the point is the uh, bigger the turbines are, you can st start getting more energy out of it. Uh, so it's also uh, there is a notion that in a, in the in the best of the resources, if you use that for smaller wind turbines you lose also the also the expensive resources uh, the land there which can be used for larger wind turbines as well so but then uh, i think they have very distinctive role to play like the island and off-grid systems uh, microgrid mini grid uh, or or the places uh, around the world there where the mean wind speed is not that high so you do not need to put large wind turbines so they there are different places where it can be useful uh, i hope that that explains some of your uh, yeah 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 really really, really. Yeah, it was a nice answer yeah thank you i mean i think i think one one of the other things is that uh, um because of these the, these tendencies that we've just described um much more development has gone into the bigger turbines and that development uh, the technologies and the the efficiency this uh, and the controls that have gone into those they haven't fed down into the smaller turbines yet and and that was one of the things that anchor was saying earlier in the, in the presentation um it is is to to find out how how some of these advances and technologies can um can come into the smaller wind turbine design uh, in order in order to make the cost of energy cheaper for them so probably we need a paradigm shift in the smaller wind turbine business that's my personal opinion i mean yeah. maybe going to vertical wind or uh, vertical axis or something because uh, that's what happened in the uh, in the, in the solar business right the solar panels are so cheap now uh, so you why uh, because so much uh, impetus was put on on developing the technology there uh, we hope that small wind turbine can also get some kind of push and that that might come from regulation which tony was was also mentioning before today that maybe somehow that can be pushed by the manufacturers yeah 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 
and um, if I'm allowed, I am totally agree we have to press the price down, but the energy we can harvest from the wind is the sweet area on a wind turbine. And uh, when we go on the market where there's a lower wind condition, not so much as we got here in the, the north part of uh, Denmark, then uh, you need even a higher sweep area from the construction. And if you need to put up the sweep area on a machine, then uh, maybe you need uh, 200 square meters to produce uh, enough energy to a uh, very small, even a, a, dust, a, a normal household. So the price is difficult to balance because the same wind turbine need to hold when there come a storm. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe a, a side comment on that because this is a very interesting discussion. I mean, uh, which is not necessarily related with small wind turbine, but uh, it, due to wind energy, we are trying to, uh, to look at a concept called a low wind turbine which is basically more suitable for uh, places where there are uh, lower wind speed. The mean wind speed is lower. Also, it's also valuable in Denmark. I, yeah, but that's from different point. But then the big uh, blades becomes bigger, like uh, like Anka was mentioning. And uh, then uh, it, it becomes actually larger wind turbine with much more fluctuation uh, loads on the blades and fluctuation on the blade. And, so it not necessarily is a small in terms of size, those bigger, those wind turbines, even the power rating might be still 200 kilowatt or something like that. Yep. No, what, what, what I mean, oh, sorry, Tom. Uh, no, 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 I I'll go, you go ahead. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I, I had just, uh, okay. And no, it's because I, I not see a 200 kilowatt, when I talk about a 200 uh, square meter sweep area, I just talk about a five kilowatt machine because uh, when we have a lot of people who come here and they tell, yes, but when we have a high wind, okay, you have high, you have a lot of wind. Yes, can I have some data? Yes, then I can see there is around three meter per second hours in it. And they need a um, wind turbine because uh, it can produce in the nighttime and they have that. And if you have an average wind where it's very low, the energy in wind are, are, are so low so you, it's it's only a five kilowatt, as I say, with the with the a, a, a forty square meters is in long. It's not enough. You need more square meters. So it's not the price for the generator and the electronic. It's the price for the braking system, the blade, blade, the tower, and all, all the stuff. Uh, so uh, yes, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's fine. I, um, I, I can see that. Um, and I, I also noticed you you um, you have put a few comments in the in the chat. Oh, uh, helt fint at du skriver på dansk, så men jeg skal lige kopiere dem over. Louis, I can see that you have uh, you have requested a, a seminar or, or dissemination of knowledge on success experiences. Um, yes. Do you mean you mean you mean successful applications uh, of 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 uh, distributed wind technology? Is is that what you're? Yes. Yes. Because uh, I think we hear a lot about. Uh, bad experiences on small wind turbines or, or distributed wind, and, and maybe it's good to to encourage the the market and the and the application mm -hmm. to hear to hear about uh, some some cases where the the, yep. the result has been su successful. Yep. Thank you for that. Yeah, 
I have one experience uh, I just want to share with Tom is that uh, there is one island in uh, Denmark which is called Levo Island. They have a wind turbine, a solar and battery and coupled with diesel gen generator. They want to go to 100% renewable but uh, still they are not able to do that and they have to run a diesel generator, uh, one of the three diesel generator every time. So what a solution do you say uh, for this problem uh, by your Kenya experience? Um, could, you, could, you just repeat, could you just repeat the challenge again, please, so that I make sure I understand it? Uh, I mean to say, uh, in one of the island uh, of Denmark, which is Livo Island, they have a three diesel generator, and they run one diesel generator for uh, 24 hours. In spite, uh, they have a wind turbine, solar, and flow battery. So, uh, what is your solution so that they can run 100% renewable? They are forced to run uh, diesel jet generator uh, for inertia point of view and for stability point of view. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the system you're talking about exactly. Um, if anybody does, then then please uh, come in. But um, yeah, I mean, this is this is the challenge of of, of running a, a, a an isolated uh, renewable energy only system is that you need a unit to um to to be able to keep the frequency um and it i mean i i of course you in in kenya i have i have seen um, um isolated systems running uh, without diesel generators it's perfectly possible um it a little bit depends on the on the age of the technology and a little bit depends on on the the, the relative capacities i think as some uh one of the one of the participants mentioned earlier um if if your if your grid i mean if your um, wind turbine is is particularly um large compared to the other components and if you have a particularly varying power output from the from the uh, wind turbine then you you are going to struggle to to keep the system um uh, running properly i don't know does anybody else have any any comments there um, maybe i can add a few and also i think anchor has some comments maybe we can start with anchor yes how can you know i could have a comment because uh, you went from uh, you unmuted yourself <laughs> ah, okay <laughs> yes uh, my comment is, uh, is uh, not that i know like who have made the, the system down there but i will not directly comment because um, yeah it's and not work directly with it but uh, it's quite easy if you if you want to one, run 100 percent then you need a very huge amount of kilowatt hour in your battery system uh, because in Denmark you can have a lot of days without no sun because in the winter time we don't have so much sun we can have a lot of day with only five percent than in logging and then we can have a week without a more without any wind and the, when the wind is coming it's coming quite strong so you only have a, a few it's your time to charge your battery system. So your wind turbine need to have a, a, a size who can charge the battery system fast enough. But is the cost price on the battery capacity and lithium battery is quite expensive per kilowatt hour. So that's the issue because that then we put in diesel. Diesel is so much cheaper to, uh, to save some capacity on your battery. Okay. Yes, uh, that's yeah. that's uh, uh, that's an angle of it. The the energy adequacy that if you need to provide the whole energy over the year, but for the very short term uh, challenges that in case there is a there is a disturbance, one of the generators or loads going out, the frequency would fall. And if you do not have any inertia in the system, like uh, you are mentioning, it's very difficult. But uh, fortunately, the new grid forming uh technologies those are inverter controls they can do it but the, again it becomes expensive that 
all the wind turbines should be should have the capabilities the larger wind turbines have that capabilities the controls for grid forming but it it need to be implemented in the all the inverters there or most of the inverters there be it the inverter connected to the battery and uh, be it the it to the wind or solar but they they are trying to do that in how many islands in hawaii and they have been successful to run 100 percent for a couple of days over a year it's not whole year yet but uh, technically it's possible economically very expensive solution and uh, the flow batteries have been getting cheaper and cheaper and lithium ion has also become cheaper so maybe in in future we can get to see those technologies more i have a comment on this uh, first of all i'm not aware of large wind turbines who have already um implemented grid forming inverters um secondly i don't think that we do uh, we we don't need uh, any grid forming wind turbines in these small systems because you could just run the battery as a grid forming unit and that's fine then you don't yeah, need, yeah. Uh, then you don't yeah, need yeah. a wind turbine or a pv system running anymore. no no it's a grid forming is the more inverter control capability and it doesn't matter where the control sits whether in the wind turbine or in the battery inverter but uh, I think uh, many of the manuf and you might <laughs> correct me, Leonard, but many of the manufacturers for the large wind turbines put that capability in their in their brochure for the wind turbines <laughs> to have the both the black start and the grid forming and at least they tell it that they, they have the capabilities now for the bigger wind turbines. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but at least that's what my my understanding is. Well, that all depends on the grid code requirements. Yeah, They're yeah, not, not yet there. Yeah, thanks for the answer, everyone. Okay, well, I hope I hope you got some some comments. Whether there was a, a one specific answer or not, I'm not sure, but I you got some comments there. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I got some comments, yeah, that I was looking for, yeah. Great, good. Um, what about the last question? Um, which specific uh, grid services do you think that distributed wind can provide and, and what sort of markets? Does, does anybody have any comments or contributions there? Do you think about uh, stapling the grid? Uh, what are you thinking about, just to understand? Uh, the, the question was more from the different markets around the world, uh, which grid uh, code requirements in terms of ancillary services is most interesting. Is there any revenue mechanism for the distributed wind or is it a, a very costly affair to provide frequency or some other services which which the research community can make cheaper uh, for the distributed wind can help actually uh, the the community. So you mean, you mean instead of just earning revenue from from kilowatt hours, you mean? Yes. Is there is there any market around the world which or upcoming market around yeah. the world there, or if, even if it is just grid code requirements, then does it is there one impeding services which is being asked? And then it becomes very difficult for the distributed wind turbines to provide that. I only have the knowledge about the Danish market, so it's difficult for me for me to say more. Um, do you have any experience from Kenya? Uh, uh, is there some, uh, because if it's islanded system somewhere, the services are being provided by someone, right? I mean, uh, 
in, in Denmark or in Europe, the larger uh, uh, generators are providing those services. Or, or Leonard, if you have any experiences there on, uh, well, I know you are researching on the smaller hybrid systems. I mean, I wouldn't generally say that um, basically wind turbines have already all the required capabilities for distributed wind integration. I would say the challenge is more on how to utilize it and uh, how to maybe um, complement wind with other resources, for example, hybridizing. I mean, you're also re researching on this in at DTU, complementing uh, wind and solar so we can uh, basically provide a more stable um, power supply, complementing it with storage units. You can provide additionally good services. So uh, I think it's a bit more on the design and how do you design a hybrid system maybe, and then also how, how you coordinate different services that a wind turbine can actually already provide. That's just my point of view. Yes, I, I, I agree, and I would say that the the possibility to to supply specific grid services are mainly on the small scale applications, uh, or isolated or weak grids, because on the on the conventional grids, the the size of the distributed wind usually is is very small in relation to the uh, source grid power of the of the grid, so the grid services on the conventional grid uh, I think are more limited to uh, offshore wind plants or big wind farms that uh, for distributed wind but in, in a small size applications or standalone applications or weak grids then maybe they, they can supply some grid services. But from your experience, Louis, are they being asked uh, currently the distributed wind turbines around the world to provide those services or they are just the grid code requirements you need to connect and then you are never being paid for you know, over the lifetime? Well, for grid connected applications, really there is not a market. Maybe the, the capabilities are there, as Leonard said. But the, for island, island and isolated off-grid systems, in in those systems, the, they are not usually uh, called grid services, but usually we call it uh, design of the system. I mean, when when you, for example, complement the wind and the solar resource, or wind and solar generation, an effect is maybe that the uh, resulting battery is smaller. And, but you, you usually don't call that a grid service, even though it might be considered as a grid service, but usually we call it that it's the optimal design. They, they, they are not commonly called grid services. Okay, uh, but what is the control aspect of it? I mean, uh, one thing is uh, you are designing for certain support, uh, but in the control aspect, is that is there something challenging for the distributed wind, uh, or is it is it same uh, for any any wind turbine? The 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 con control challenges is there. Do you see anything that? Well, I I, I I would say that the the control challenge the main control challenge may be that the the grid to which is it is uh, connected may be not so strong so the the power quality of the grid um, might be uh, poorer than the uh, power quality of the conventional grid mm -hmm. so the in, in terms of the uh, power electronics that they may be affected by this uh, poor power quality or poor power quality. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, Louis and Leonard. Yeah. So, so really, we we don't really know if there are um, distributed uh, 
I mean, services that the distributed wind can can provide, or if there are any markets, um, as as far as I can hear from the from the participants. Yeah, I have one uh, question to Tom. Uh, you earlier said that in Kenya you couldn't uh, finish the project; uh, it was incomplete, something like that. So, what was uh, the reason behind it? Yeah, yeah, I did say that, and that's right. Um, the reason, the reason behind it was that um, um, it was a project that was uh, being financed by um, uh, the Danish Overseas Aid um, Unit, which uh, Danida, and um, uh, part of the requirement for for them to to fund the project was that that. Um, Vestas, the wind turbine manufacturer, was in the project and was um, developing or, or, or starting the development um, of a new small wind turbine that would be able to to uh, to compete on cost with with solar energy. Um, and the reason why the project was stopped was because Vestas decided that uh, they couldn't see the um, the business case uh, for uh, being able to to start that process, um, it's uh, and 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 without them, the uh, Danida found that that they they couldn't continue funding the rest of the project, which of course um, I I felt was a personally I felt was a shame because um, I think there were there was a lot of other good work that was going on in the project and and not least. Uh, one of the issues that we talked about right at the beginning of this session about about the the regulatory challenges um, there was there was a, a a proper investigation going on into the the regulatory uh, situation in Kenya and this as I was saying this imbalance between a, a, a governmental desire to try and involve private financing and, and private developers uh, but on the other hand, a regulatory mismatch that that um, they weren't allowed to 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 charge more than the the national uh, rate per kilowatt hour for so so it was actually not really economically feasible for them to to uh, to make a private investment into a mini grid. So it, it, I, I think uh, the, the project was doing a lot of other work other than just um, the, the technical uh, work needed for for uh, for a new small wind turbine. And uh, I think it was a shame that the project was stopped. But that was the reason because Vestas pulled out of the project. So uh, Vestas couldn't compete with solar at that time. That's no. Um, what what they said is that they couldn't see the market for them to be able to start to develop a small wind turbine. Uh, they said that they they technically they could they could make a, a small wind turbine that would would compete with solar, but they didn't see the market. So it was from a business model point of view that they decided not to continue. They say they will keep reviewing the situation and, and they want to enter the enter the, the market again once once they see the business case. But um, it's not there at the moment. What size was the wind turbine the investors was thinking of? Well they were thinking of something between uh, between five and thirty kilowatts, something in that range. Okay. Oh it would be great, of course, if Vestas would enter, but it's difficult, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, again, this is, my, and I know this is being recorded, but it's not going to be public. But <laughs> my personal uh, view on it was, in in a way, it was very optimistic of of Vestas um, because, I mean, the the it's a whole totally different market for them. I mean, their their, yeah. their business is is really aimed at, at the larger wind turbines, the the larger investors, the larger developers. Um, and and to do, and to, to go with a, a new product line of of a small wind turbine between five and 20, uh, thirty kilowatts, I mean, that would be a, a whole different set of customers and a whole different set of investors uh, that their organisation is not really geared up to do. So it it there was a lot more consideration than just the technical challenges for them. Yeah. Well, they are even uh, well, not not only Vestas, not only all the big wind turbines manufacturer. 
manufacturers are abandoning the one megawatt scale, for example, which for me, in my opinion, is much easier to to be introduced in, in, in the market. But of course, this smaller scale is, is even more difficult. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's that's that that is the that is the tendency. Yes, um, and I and I know. That, I mean, Vestas um, they they provided the turbines for the for the famous Lake Turkana uh, project in 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 Kenya, um, and they had to they had to nearly bring out a, a, a wind turbine model out of retirement to to be able to fulfil that need. So. That, that's that's the tendency for for the big manufacturers yeah yeah thank you thank you for the answer okay yeah, maybe i can comment a little bit um just from my personal point of view although yes. i'm an, an industrial phd with vestas and i uh -huh. know very well about uh, the project but i would just comment now from my personal point of view um i still think that um small wind has a, a big chance for um, if just a big player like a company like Vestas or whatever else um, would um, take such topic more seriously then I think at some point it could be a good business model but the the problem is just that the distributed wind market is so dispersed around the world so it's very hard to observe all the different uh, markets and um, market opportunities obstacles and and so on so that's actually one thing i discovered last year when i attended the microgrid symposium in uh, in the US, in the us there are so many different stakeholders from so many different regions and it's not really transparent to to everybody so it's i think this is quite the challenge for i mean even for the for the small um wind players you you see that they um they are not really having sufficient um, capital in order to invest further and in, into these um, uh, markets so um, yeah it would probably require a big player to to really enter into this this market but it's very very challenging but I, I still think it there could be a possibility sometime I think that, but that's I, my personal point of view no but that's a that's a that's a very good comment very good comment that the that it, it it's a very um, patchwork uh, market with, with with very different regulations and very different conditions uh, depending on, on on which country or which area of the globe you're you're looking at so it, it is difficult you're right but but uh, does uh, IEA uh, I know this can also be discussed in the other session on the data but uh, does uh, having data uh, and if IEA can collect it from major um, places in the world would that help uh, the businesses uh, in performing better business case? Again, from your personal opinion, Leonard, because this is very important, I think, for for this group. I'm not so strong on the regulatory and, and business uh, area, so I'm not sure what exactly would be required. Um, but there are definitely more transparency and uh, I actually really like the, the comment by, by Louis that we I think we really need a seminar and a knowledge dissemination on success experiences particularly for distributed wind and, and, and isolated uh, systems because when you go to these um, microgrid conferences um, they're all talking about PV and storage of course, they also talk about what po theoretical potential wind can have, but then they are coming immediately with all the obstacles in terms of cost and uh, size. So it has to be containerized solutions. Otherwise you cannot reach these areas and so on. So there are many obstacles that are being raised, but maybe we should really focus more on success experience and provide a platform so that everybody can actually see it. Point. Yes, yes uh, I don't know if Anka can speak, but we we are we have the mandate to arrange two more workshops like today. Uh, so yeah, we should definitely take this into consideration in our future workshop to have the success experiences being shared. We'll 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 consider that while organizing. That's great.
Thank you, Lennon. Well, I think um, I think the the, the organisers are now um, going to um, uh, close up these sessions. I think we've had about a, an hour. So, um, does anybody have any uh, last minute comments before we close? Yeah, I have not comment, but I just want to know is that uh, by 2050, everybody is saying that we should be 100% renewable. So seeing from uh, stability point of view, replacing a large inertia of uh, fuel, fuel sources generator, how can renewable uh, meet this challenge? So you got the question? Uh, I think we have just 50 seconds left and the, the <laughs> counter is ongoing. So, and this is a very diffi a difficult uh, and large question. So maybe we should take it separately some other time. But I appreciate the question, it's very interesting. Yeah, no, no, it, 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 that, that, is, that is one of the major challenges indeed um, of, of how to either replicate or replace uh, the the electrical uh, inertia that we have in in the systems as they've been um, historically built up. But as Kaushik says, we just have ten seconds left. So what I will do is to thank you all for for participating. Thank you very much for your questions and discussions. And we will now go back to the plenum session. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank. You.